Well, hello, darling. Today we're going to talk about the Coveco Supra fountain pen. Uh, this was sent to me by the good people over at Coveco. I did not pay for this pen. However, I am not being paid for this pen. Therefore, all the comments are my own. So if you checked out my review that I did last week of the Coveco Lilliput, uh, I am essentially now reviewing its mommy or daddy. <laughs> the Kaveco Supra, uh, also in the fire blue edition. Uh, basically, it is just the bigger version of the Lilliput. Uh, everything on the outside pretty much looks the same. Um, the little brand at the top here, which again, you'll see more in the close up because this camera sucks, um, <laughs> is the exact same on this little guy. So if you've ever used a Lilliput before, you almost know what to expect here. Um, so this being a larger version is just a giant tube of metal that has been torched uh, to have this fire blue uh, design that will patina over time, uh, which is kind of cool. I can see that it's already started to pick up some of my like hand oils and I have really dry hands. Um, so I can imagine how quickly this would change if you did not have super dry hands. Um, but the cool thing about the Supra is that this little tube on the inside uh, is removable. So if you like the size of the Caveco Lilliput, uh, but you hate the fact that it's so narrow, um, then this might be something that you could explore. Because if you unscrew the lid, which by the way, this has a full size nib, um, it is designed to be screwed onto the back, just like the lily putt, but then it is a gigantic honk of metal. <laughs> it's super heavy, back weighted. Um, I don't think anyone really is going to need that. Um, so you can unscrew that and just use it as a full size pen, uh, decent size weight because it is all metal and the grip section is much larger. So for comparison, the lily putt here. Look at these, look at this little guy, he's so cute. <laughs> um, so you definitely, uh, you know, check that the Supra out if you like the Lilliput, um, because yeah, it's a full size pen. But if you want more of a pocket size pen, you can remove the nib and unit here. I just have the um, Caveco uh, cartridge that's in here, but you can take this whole section off and then this chunk, this middle piece here, you can actually just put aside and then take the butt end of the pen, put it back in. And then you got a little pocket pen. Um, so then you can screw the cap back on. And then you still have a full size pen with the cap screwed on. But if you take the cap back off and screw it in, boom. You now have a girthier lily put. Uh, so it's it's a hair a bit taller, um, but it's certainly wider. Um, this is like very, very skinny, um, skinnier than any pen that I really know of. Um, so you get a girthier lily put essentially um, with a full size nib. So that's kind of cool. Supra is more expensive than the lily put, especially this version. I will put the... Um, price on the bottom here. Um, but that is really cool that you can kind of customize it. Um, and I don't really know any other fountain pens that can do that. If you have it in what I'm going to call the Lilliput configuration, you can only have the Caveco short cartridges. Um, you can't have any of the long ones. But if you do keep the middle tubey part um, on, oops, wrong way. if you do keep this part attached, then you can have a long cartridge or converter included, uh, which is very nice. The Caveco nib is a number six size nib, so it is full size, which is really, really nice. Um, I like the fact that it's full size. I've never actually used a Caveco full size nib before. The Lilliput um, is a little tiny bit smaller than the Caveco Sport, if you've ever used one. Um, but it's pretty darn close. Um, so it's really nice having a full size, uh, nib on this. 
The step up here is pretty sharp, um, but you don't really feel it because um, the fleshy part of your thumb is really where that sits for me. Um, and it's shockingly not super slippery considering it's a metal pen, um, which is nice. It is heavy. Um, I'm not a huge, huge heavy pen person, um, but it's still comfortable enough to write for about 40 ish minutes um, when I did a journaling session with this pen, uh, which was really nice. I love the way that this fire blue uh, torched look is. Um, I really, really like it. And again, on this lily put here, I appreciate the fact that they're totally, totally different. Like obviously, okay, they look the same in the sense that like the general look is the same, but like the patterns are completely different. Um, and I like the fact that it picks up your hand oils. It's going to patina over time. So it's going to be really interesting to watch how this changes. Um, you know, maybe like a year, two years from now, I'll do another review, um, just to show how this is uh, actually changed. Um, so I appreciate the fact that you can customize this. What I didn't like, um, is that when I first got it, sorry, my nose is super itchy. <laughs> When I first got it, it took a few days uh, worth of use uh, to get rid of the metal smell. Um, and it left that metal smell on my fingers, uh, which I did not like. I had to wash my hands basically every time I was done playing with this pen. It doesn't have it anymore. I got the nose whistle too, check that out. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have that anymore and it doesn't leave that uh, smell on my fingers anymore. Um, so. Just keep in mind that that, uh, that could happen. And then the same thing with the lily put. Um, I didn't actually even mention that in the lily put video because um, I just didn't think about it at the time. Um, so bonus if you're watching this one. Uh, yeah, it did kind of stink for a few days. Um, sort of like how the um, like Noodlers or Edison or any of the acrylic pens, um, how they can have like a really intense smell and sort of leave that on your fingers for a few days. Um, this is similar to that. Not as intense as Noodler's. Noodler's smell sometimes never goes away. I'm one of the weird freaks that kind of like that smell. <laughs> but I did not like the smell of the metal. Um, but thankfully, that is gone. Um, but let me uh, flip the camera around real quick and we will take a look at how it writes. Okay, so the nib for today is Caveco's number six size medium steel nib. The ink is Sailor Manyo Kikyo or Kikyo, however you want to pronounce it. Um, like all of Caveco's nibs, it's not a super wet writer. Um, it is wetter than the um, uh, sports or the... Um, Oh, geez Louise, <laughs> it is wetter than um, their smaller size nibs, like on the sports uh, or the lily put, um, but it's not like a, a gusher by any means. For line variation, you can definitely squeeze out a, a good chunk, uh, actually an impressive chunk, um, but it is not meant to do that. Um, so the more you do, the wider your main line will be. This is a fairly beefy medium. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a broad, but it is a, a beefy medium. Uh, reverse. Apparently I can't spell uh, like how I wanted to, you know, put the dot over here instead of over here, but you know, um, it actually feels pretty smooth uh, and decent flow as well. Um, the actual nib itself feels really good. I actually, I really enjoy the way that this feels. Of course, it's Tomoe River, so it's giving it its best chance, um, but it does feel really good. I've never had any hard starts or skips with this, but it does feel really, really good. Um, I would like it to be a little bit more wet, but it, I really, really enjoy the, the way that this writes. Um, the pen's a little heavy for me, um, and I don't love the entire metal body, but the nib itself is really great. Um, so if you like metal pens, then definitely pick this up. If you can uh, afford the little bit of jump to the fire blue, I highly recommend that too, um, because 
This material is awesome and it is already changing the patina as it ages. Uh, and I, I really like that a lot. Um, so if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, like it every Monday and Friday and occasional Tuesday video for my book series. Uh, do hit the subscribe button. Uh, and as always, if you're still watching, I appreciate you. You're the reason why I make them. And I'll see you next time. Bye.